is up you guys Gabriel here uh, starting day one of this vlog uh, camera tutorial type thing uh, I've been meaning to start this for quite some time and uh, yeah I have a little bit more free time on my hands so today I'm gonna try it out so today we're gonna talk about just some camera basics kind of some tips and tricks to how to get better photos um, so yeah let's go ahead and cut to that tutorial then all right, then good. So a little bit about me. Um, 21 years old, uh, born and raised here in Chicago. I got into photography, I think my, well really I got into it like my senior year of high school. Uh, a friend of mine kind of introduced to me the idea of capturing moments with photography. So uh, since high school, I've always been interested in this realm of photography. So I uh, took a class in college and kind of got my first camera. It was a uh, Canon. Uh, T3 so not that great of a camera um, but then again camera is really to find good photography it's mainly who's taking the photos um, so yeah I stuck with photography about good three four years and then I started to go into some video work and that's mainly because my family and I we took over uh, the gym that I was a member at and uh, we just wanted to up our social media so at first I was just doing the photography for media and then uh, with COVID happening, we kind of pivot into doing video stuff. Kind of realized that there was a need to kind of up our video game. And we had hired a other company to do a commercial for us, but that was like so much money um, just for like a minute and a half of video. So we figured, hey, why not just, I hop into that since um, the principles of videography and photography are pretty similar. Uh, a couple things are different depending on frame rate and whatnot. But that's not what uh, I'm gonna be talking about today. Today I'm gonna be talking about uh, tips for when you guys are shooting manual uh, photography with your camera. So I'm gonna be demoing today on this uh, Fuji X100. Um, mainly because my main camera that I'm recording this on, I'm recording on. So I'll be using this kind of like demo and talk about it. And really with these uh, tricks and uh, just knowledge about the camera, basically you can do this with any camera that, as long as it has a manual setting on it. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that now. So, let's talk about the three things you can control on your camera uh, when you're on manual settings, all right? So whenever you put your camera on manual, you're pretty much taking control of everything it does. And sometimes when you go manual, you have more options, more creativity to go with your photos. That being said, it's not always bad to always have your camera on auto. Sometimes, you know, you're on a running gun situation or you're out with family, you gotta take a quick family photo. Having it on auto is pretty good because you don't have to worry about changing any of the, setting th anything of the settings and everything's pretty much good to go. That being said, when you go to manual mode, you're able to control the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. All right, so we're gonna talk about what each one does and how you can kind of use them in your advantage when you guys are taking photos. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Now that we find a pretty nice setting to take some photos, let's go ahead and put the camera down and talk about these camera settings and what exactly that they do. All right, then good. We've found our spot. Hopefully I don't get too wet because the water's pretty high today. So I'll try to make this as quick as possible to avoid getting soaked by these waves. So let's talk about the settings. Turn on your camera. Make sure that you're on manual mode. And usually you'll know if you're on manual mode because uh, usually on your camera it'll say M. Uh, you probably can't see it on here. Right there in the bottom corner. I won't focus, but you guys get, get the idea. As long as it says M, your camera's on manual mode. So now, whoo, water got high, pretty high on that one. Woo -hoo. So, let's go ahead and talk about the settings. So, we have shutter, aperture, and ISO. So, with shutter, it's pretty much, you're modifying how quick the shutter is opening and closing on the camera, right? So it's very much one, two. 
So if I have a fast shutter speed, it's gonna be closing pretty quick. If I have it slow, it's gonna be a slow motion. And what that does is that it affects how much light is going into your camera. So why does that matter? So if you're on outside on a pretty gray, gray day like it is right now, you're gonna probably wanna have a pretty slow shutter speed because if you have it high, you're not gonna get that much light coming in. So the camera, sorry, just keep looking over here because the wave's getting pretty high. Um, so if you don't have that much light coming in, photos gonna be too dark. Unless you're going for that, uh, it's gonna be too underexposed and not, there's not gonna be that much detail in the photos. Now, when you have a slow, a couple things happen, all right? When you have a slow shutter speed, what'll happen is there's a lot of motion blur. And what we mean by motion blur is that there's a lot of movement happening in the camera. So when there's a lot of motion blur, you'll probably see those cool photos like on Instagram or on Facebook where like it looks like the cars are just streak of lights. What that is, is motion blur. So that's probably means someone, whoever took that photo had a slow shutter speed on their camera. Now, that's good if you're doing low light photography because again, you're gonna have a lot of light coming in from that lens because the shutter speed is so uh, low. However, when you have a slow shutter speed, there's more motion blur. So if you have shaky hands, the photos can come out pretty blurry and you're not gonna have that cool effect of the motion blur like you had intended. When you have a fast shutter speed, there's less light coming in, but more things are in focus. So typically you see a lot of uh, sports photographer use fast shutter speed because athletes are moving so quickly, you wanna get everything nice and sharp. So that's why they typically shoot with a higher shutter speed. But when that happens, you, you use a lot of light. So that's when aperture comes in. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about aperture. So, when we're talking about aperture, this is only talking about the lens, not the camera whatsoever. Because shutter, that's something the camera does, but aperture is something that you're changing on the actual lens. So, this Fuji X100, this is an F2 uh, aperture, and this lens that I'm shooting on is an F2.8. So what is aperture? So on camera lenses, there are little blades inside the camera that open up to allow in more light. Opening up that blade is affecting the aperture. So, when you hear sometimes that a lens is super fast, it probably means it has a pretty high aperture, like an f1.8, f1.2. So why does that matter? What the, why does aperture matter? So aperture is how you pretty much achieve the nice bokeh effect where the background is blurry. So if you see right now, I put my hand over here, it's not in focus, not because of the camera, but because I have the aperture at 2.8, so anything in the background that I don't want in focus, it's gonna be out of focus. So it kinda makes it look kinda cool, edgy, whatever you want it. A lot of photographers love bokeh. So when you have a pretty fast lens, like this one with a 2.8, you're gonna have that nice bokeh effect. Now, that being said, the more open the aperture is, the more light that comes in. So if you're shooting on a really bright day and you have your aperture set super open, that uh, photo might turn out to be super overexposed because there's so much light coming into the lens. So that's why sometimes you have to bump up the aperture. And the higher the aperture, the more subjects that are gonna be in focus, all right? So if I were to bump this up to like a F5, pretty much if I hold my hands up to the side, it would be in sharp focus because I have the aperture up so high. However, like I said, more the higher aperture, that means the blade's gonna be more closed, which means less light's gonna be coming in. So typically you wanna uh, just use high aperture when you're dealing with like sports photography or land, uh, wildlife photography because you want more stuff to be in focus, hence why you need a pretty uh, closed lens for the light. Now, how do these two work in conjunction with each other? All right, now let's go talk about that. So, let's talk about Nice little stepping lounge. Let's talk about how they work together, aperture and shutter speed. So, I wanna have that nice bokeh effect, but there's too much light coming to my lens, so what do I do? I make my shutter speed faster. So if I have an aperture 1.8 and that's still too overexposed, I will probably set my shutter speed to like 200, uh, over 200 a second, just so that way um, there's 
that fast lens closing so that's gonna cut how much light is going as well as the lens can still stay wide open and that's why typically these uh, wide aperture lenses like f1.8 f1.2 are called fast lenses because you have your shutter speed set so high that it won't affect the bokeh effect now let's just say I want to have a motion blur but it's still too much light coming in because I have the, the shutter speed closing so slow. So what do I do? I'll set my aperture up really high to like F16 to really minimize how much light is coming into the lens so that way the camera can really take its time to close that shutter. Now let's talk about the third thing that I mentioned which was ISO which I didn't give it that much attention to. ISO is pretty much uh, how the computer inside the camera is reading the light. So when you're typically outside on a bright day, your ISO is going to be typically set at 400 um, because that's a pretty standard ISO to have it at. Now obviously as the day is brighter, you set your ISO lower, so it'll be like 100 will be your ISO if it's a super sunny day. But if it's a super dark situation like low light, then you have your ISO set pretty high to like 800, uh, 1600, sometimes 2400 depending on what your camera can go up to. Now the con with ISO is that the higher your ISO, the more noise is going to happen. So if I were to record this video with a super high ISO, noise is pretty much the grain that shows up in the photos or videos, kind of like that graininess, which if you want that effect for your photos, by all means have at it. I personally don't like a lot of noise in my photos, um, just because it kind of takes away the, from the, the, de the details in the photos that I want to enhance. So that's why typically with um, my ISO, I tend to keep at 400, and if I'm ever doing low light photography, I'll typically set it to, if anything, 1600, and then I'll try to use the denoise in Lightroom to try to change that. And that is it, guys, for my camera tutorial basics. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make this channel gonna be, if it's gonna be continuing to be tutorials, um, or just like a vlog-like thing. I'm not sure if I have the confidence to do a vlog yet. I still had a hard time like even talking to you guys here, and even right now during COVID Chicago that there's like no one around. Still felt a little bit weird talking to you guys. Um, we'll kind of chit chat after we cross the street. That's a lot of cars. So we have, ooh, yeah, kind of dark. Ah, there we go. So we've successfully crossed the street, guys. So as I was saying, I'm still not sure as to what I'm gonna make this channel about. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm making like a vlog, camera tutorial only type stuff. Uh, comment down below if what you guys want to see more. Um, I don't think I've showed you guys the gym at all. Well, I haven't. It's the first video, so duh. Um, but yeah, so just let me know what you guys want to see more of. And yeah, next time I shoot a video, uh, I'm going to try to be consistent, try to do it in the next week and a half, maybe sooner. Who knows, depending on if I have more free time. And I'll be talking about how you can do the same manual settings that I was talking about today with your camera on your phones. Because we waste like thousands of dollars on iPhones yet we still don't use the camera to full capacity even though they got some pretty nice camera. So I'll talk about that next week. So see you guys then. Bye.